Welcome back to John's Films, your home for tech videos you can't find anywhere else. Today, I'm teaching networking, firewall, and VLAN 101. We're gonna talk about network basic structures, we'll talk about firewall implementations, and we'll look at how to set up traffic management between VLANs. I'll even show you how to implement these rules on Ubiquiti's Unify Network Controller. Let's jump into it and see how it goes. To understand firewall rules, we need to understand the function. Generally speaking, firewall rules restrict access from one computer to another on a network. They're your easiest and least complicated defense against malicious actors, which is just security speak for bad guys. Why is it the easiest? Well, generally speaking, firewalls block everything. You can set them up as a giant vault door between you and the internet and then drill tiny little holes that only allow certain types of traffic through them. This is your most effective means because it means that your malicious actors never get a login screen. They never get the chance to try and hack your network because they can't even get through. And so if you set up your network correctly, you will have your first line of defense be one of the most effective against stopping malicious action in your network. In general, Firewall rules can be applied at the front door of your house and at the back door of your house. As someone's coming through the front door on, say, the WAN port, which is your wide area network or internet facing port, you have the option to screen them in your first step. Then, if your network, somebody in your house, is trying to leave, you have the ability to screen them there as well. So you kind of have this two tiered in and out section for each interface in your network. Well, what are the interfaces? You have the WAN, wide area network, like we just talked about, but then you have an interface for your local area networks. And anytime you're trying to traverse between multiple local area networks, like we'll talk about in VLANs in a minute, you get the option of both the inbound traffic being looked at, but also the outbound when you leave a network. So now we understand where we can inject a firewall rule. Now let's talk about the types of rules that can exist. It's fairly simple. You can write a rule to allow traffic, to block traffic, or to drop the request altogether. That's it, three simple rules. So, so far we know that we've got where we can put the rules, we know what we can do with them, the actions we can take. The last thing is to understand the state. Connection state's actually quite important. What it means to us is we have the ability now to understand if this is a new request, if it was related to another request, if it's associated or response to a request that was previously made, or if it doesn't fit any of those categories. Given that, we now get to have intelligence about the rules we apply. Maybe we don't let traffic come into our network unless we initiated a connection outside of it at first. That's a very common rule. In fact, it's often the default rule on many network routers. Now we get to play with our new knowledge. One thing we should understand, however, is that on the interior networks, you can have several. Imagine you're a doctor's office and you want your staff computers to be separate from your waiting room Wi-Fi. But the problem is when you use a consumer router, they're all grouped together. Well, if they're all grouped together, then it's potential for one of your staff computers to get hacked by somebody in your waiting room. And so if there were a way that you could get two routers and two network connections, you'd be able to have those be separate. Or you can use a concept called virtual LANs or VLANs. Now VLANs allow you to segment your traffic with certain clients restricted from even knowing the others exist by putting them in separate logical networks. We're going to use this as we apply rules to our LAN in network interfaces. In fact, when we were talking about where we can put firewall rules, there's two really common places to do it. The first is on the WAN in, which is everything coming from the external network, wide area network, commonly the internet, coming into you. And the next is on the LAN, local area network, in interface. And the reason you do that is because if you've got your doctor's office staff network and you've got your customer network, you can put rules between those using that LAN in. As I said, we'll now demonstrate that in a UDM network. Unify does a good job of giving you a dashboard to view the status of your network. If you want to change anything, you jump down here and I'll go to networks. This is where I would establish a doctor's office with a waiting room and a staff network. However, in my home, you can see I've got networks for my cameras, for my entertainment center, for what I call insecure things or IOT, 
and my local LAN and Wi-Fi LAN, where all of my Wi-Fi access is. The Insecure Things Network is what we'll talk about today. An IoT device is an Internet of Things device. It's typically something that doesn't really need to talk to anybody else. It's often a gauge, a measurement, or a single control, much like your thermostat or a smoke detector. I don't need those to have access to the rest of my house. In fact, they sync up to services in the cloud. So the only access they should really have is to the cloud. Let's enable that now in our internet security space. I'll click on security and here I go to internet threat management. Now that we've scrolled down in the internet threat management, we can see our firewall and firewall rules. I'll create a new rule. Here you can see I've got a choice of what type of rule I want to write. What it's really asking me is where do you want to enforce this rule? The internet here is the WAN, so I have WAN in, WAN out. I have LAN in and LAN out, so that's for the local area networks. Beyond that, I've got local, which is referring to any traffic terminating directly in the routing device, same for LAN. And then I have guest in, guest out, guest local. Those are all for the guest specified networks here in Unify. I'm choosing LAN in because I'd like to work on the rules that deal with inner LAN traffic. In fact, in this, I'm going to block or reject all IoT traffic to my Wi-Fi land, all my Wi-Fi work. And here I'm going to say, okay, it's enabled. The action that we'll take is to reject the traffic. The source, I will choose a source from either an address import group, which I could have built in the prior page, a network as a whole, or an IP address specifically. I'm choosing the whole network. And in this case, I'm choosing the insecure things network. And this says, for source, anything that comes from this network and has a destination of, again, the same three choices, and I'll choose Wi-Fi land out of my network drop. I know I want to reject. So what we've established here is that we will block anything coming in the LAN interface on the in route, block or reject everything that comes from the network and secure things and has a destination of Wi-Fi land. Notice. I can filter further to say if it's a new state or an established state, invalid or related. In this case, I choose none. Click apply changes. And now when I go back to my firewall rules and look at the LAN rules, I can find a block or reject IoT to local networks right here. The other type of network change that we'd hear in the advanced features section of settings, it's called port forwarding. This allows us to take inbound traffic from the internet and direct it to a very specific place in our network. In the case of my home assistant port, I get to take anything coming across very specific ports and forward them to an IP address. I can even change the ports to match those on my server. So if I didn't want to use 8123 or 443, I could route that traffic over to some crazy port here. Alternatively, I could publish on ports that nobody had ever heard of and route it internally back to 8123 and 443. It gives you the choice of TCP or UDP traffic, and if you'd like to log it, it will. I'll apply the changes, and that's now set up. What's great about this is if I then go into security and jump into a firewall under Internet Threat Management, I'm able to see those ports right here. This is an automatically generated firewall rule from that port forwarding interface. Well, there you go. I hope this has been helpful. You've been able to see where we've applied rules. We get to see what actions we can take. We've understood connection state. We've understood VLANs. And now we know how to build rules between our different networks. In a future video, I'll talk about why you might want to do this and how you might segment your home lab. Thanks for watching. And as always, click like or subscribe if you haven't. I really enjoy you being here and it makes my day when somebody hits that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and have a great day.